What's up everybody? Today we have a pretty easy one. I guess easy is always relative whenever you're inspecting properties, but it is a 1200 square foot 1980s property. And one thing I like to say about these ones is it's a great first time home buyer property because of the price point and the size of the structure. And then also it is good for investment properties, which is also scary for the first time home buyers. So if you get like a bad flipper in there and he goes in and just puts lipstick everywhere, just paints everything, then the first time home buyer gets stuck with all these issues. So that being said, let's go in there and kind of get an idea of how to evaluate this if you're a first time home buyer or someone just coming in to look at purchasing the property to live in it and try to help identify key components on what can save you money. So uh, let's see what we're gonna go find and let's go check it out. So what a lot of first time home buyers do when they approach a property is they just go straight inside and they start looking at if it fits all their furniture and the colors match or the kitchen's in the right place. That's not what I want you to do. The first thing I want you to do is actually start on the outside. As you approach the property, just look at the roof. And then if you look at your roof, it looks a little bit older and then take a look at your neighbor's roof. You kind of see this roof is newer and then look across the street over here too as well. I don't know if it shows up in the video very well, but you got a new roof with solar panels and a newer roof over there. So you got to just guess. You're guessing, obviously. It, the, your roof is probably coming close to the end of its life. Obviously, you're going to get someone like us maybe to come out and walk it and give you an estimate. We don't give you estimates. Roofers give you estimates of figure out how much damage it can cost to fix it. But what I want you to do first, what I'm pretty much trying to say is look at it from the ground level first. I'm gonna get up there in a second, but see, we're just gonna scan the roof from the ground level just as you walk up. I'm not telling you to look at the whole roof all the way around. This is me just walking up. And if you can kind of see with your, just the eye, you see all those little dots all over the place. You got some lifted shingles, you got some missing shingles. So before you even put in an offer on this property, you already know that you're gonna have to budget for, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say a roof, maybe a roof replacement. Yeah, you got a roof replacement. You know, 10 dinks over 10 square feet on any roof automatically qualifies for some sort of insurance claim for roof, uh, roof repair. So here you go, just looking at it, you already know that you're going to have to replace this roof here in the near future obviously we're gonna see more you can see there's several shingles missing some flashing damage uh, you got some rusted flashing questionable flashing repair coming across you have a lot of granule loss over here on the front side of the structure well, it might not be reflecting very well in the video but we have a lot of granule loss and then this is what I'm talking about here. You're starting to have a lot of hail damage on this portion of the roof. So, oh, look at all this hail damage over here. Easy, easy ride up for a home inspector and um, easy claim for the seller maybe before they can put it on the market. Also something to check on, they may have already put a claim on it and collected the money. So that's something to keep an eye out on uh, too as well. So. Good questions to ask before you finally close on this property, before you get stuck with a big bill. Okay, the next thing you, I want you to do before you fall in love with the property and you walk inside, um, walk around the exterior. And so what you're doing when you're walking around the exterior is get an idea of how the water is traveling around your structure. This will directly reflect on how the foundation is performing, especially in the Houston area. It'll be different other locations, but in Houston, water is the number one reason why our structures are moving. The clay and sandy soils uh, flex uh, and move a lot whenever you have an excessive moisture moving around the structure and it's not draining out properly. So, for example, let's look at this. You can kind of see they have a uh, trench here, a swell moving around the structure in this location, traveling down and out and away. There's a small blockage where the tree roots have reached underneath the structure and uh, you might just want to clear that up to prevent any future movement. So 
overall the water appears to be moving away from this structure properly which is good the next thing I want you to do is look at the siding of the structure this is going to be your next expensive item outside of the roof the HVAC and then your siding siding gets really expensive to replace because labor is crazy expensive right now so we have vinyl siding and we have brick vinyl siding is used a lot to cover things up in the Houston area so looking at this vinyl siding I can see that it's been improperly installed you can see that there's no kick out flashing in this location you have a lot of siding to the ground contact all the way through the structure here so whenever you're looking at the property when we move inside we're gonna see if we find any you know water damage in this location I bet we do <laughs> so you're looking at the siding and all you have to do is just determine is it damaged or not does it look like it's in poor condition and you can start racking up the dollar amounts you know I have roof damage you have siding damage I'm possible grading it and drainage repair and you want to start writing down like how much it's going to cost to make this property livable and sustainable over a long period of time okay so the next thing I want you to do is take a look at your outside condenser and whenever you're doing this you're just kind of getting an idea of how it's performing just listen to it and sometimes you can just type in the serial number and pull off the year and the date that it was manufactured in to kind of give you an idea of how old this uh, how old your condenser is most of these things especially in the Texas area they last anywhere between 10 and 15 years depending on the condition this one right here the most thing the biggest thing that I notice is that uh, the motors a little out of balance you can kind of hear it rattling and then also you can you can see here that the uh, uh, it's using 410A, so it's not too old, and it looks like it's missing some insulation and, and uh, the conduit's pulled loose a little bit. So it does need some um, maintenance, you know, and a general maintenance fee to get a, an HVAC guy out is like a minimum of $300 now. So you want to start thinking about that, adding that into your budget too as well. Hey everyone, if you could take a quick minute and hit that like and subscribe button, that helps grow the YouTube channel and... Um, helps more people find the content and lets me know that I'm doing a good job. So please uh, hit that like and subscribe button and uh, keep following us. Second to last stop before you fully commit yourself to falling in love with the property. I want you to walk up to your water heater, try to locate it. Sometimes it's in the attic area. Today it is in the garage. And I, yes, there's gonna be things wrong with it. But what I want you to try to do is identify the age. So this one is, this one's about, it's 2002. So it's a, I can't be right. It's right, <laughs> it's 20 years old. So we know we have a 20 year old water heater uh, on, on the, on the prop. Okay, the camera died. But, um, so you know, because most of these things last 10 to 15 years that this one's coming close to the end of its life too as well. So you know that you can add this into your budget too before you start falling in love with the property. The next thing I want you to do is look at what type of water lines are on the structure. And you can see that that's copper, which is a fantastic sign, especially for a 1980s property. You really want to see copper or PEX in a structure like this because the galvanized water lines have started failing across the city of Houston. So um, that being said, it's a good sign that you have copper plumbing, but you do need a new water heater, which is minimal and the big scheme of purchasing a property that's not that big of a deal compared to the new roof a water heater is like a thousand dollars if you pay someone to do it 500 bucks if you do it yourself okay the next step last step what i want you to do before you fall in love with the, the property you're trying to purchase is look at your hvac system from the attic ladder if possible and the the, the structure overall just kind of ask your realtor or somebody if you can just take a quick peek I do it on all my properties that I've always pop up before I put in an offer drop the attic ladder and just take a quick look around and kind of get an idea of what you're about to get into so as you can see right here just take a quick look at the roof structure overall it looks in pretty good condition you don't have anything really pulling away or separating which is a good sign I'm telling you this is just a quick look uh, and then look at your ductwork. You can kind of see this gray ductwork and it's all laying across the floor there. 
that's not ideal and your HVAC is going to underperform and that gray duct work it actually falls apart pretty easily if any UV rays hit it so any good HVAC guy whenever they come in they're gonna recommend to replace it and that gets pricey <laughs> I don't even know where to start with that if you know drop in the comment section if you can um, and then if you can in the distance just try to take a look at your furnace in the coils there and I'm not saying walk over there and get the serial numbers but you're trying to see if it matches what you got outside you know and it does look pretty close it looks to the it looks similar to the age so you know that it's less likely that you're gonna have to replace it it's gonna be more maintenance the biggest thing is you're gonna be looking at your duct work with this okay I'm gonna wrap up the video there but what I'm trying to say is you're doing a general performance scan I'm not telling you to try to find things if they meet code what you're doing is you're just looking for damage and kind of just assess the overall condition just by looking at it and if you don't know I'm sure you know someone that does know just take a picture of it send it to them and be like hey how does this look people love answering those questions I do <laughs> so I help out people all the time when it comes to situations like that so what you're doing is just kind of get a general overall of how much it's gonna cost to get this property up and running I know the market is intense right now and the and what you got is very limited of what you can put an offer on and put an offer in on in your budget but what you want to do is make sure that this house doesn't crush you in the end of the day at the end of the day through maintenance whenever you first move into it so overall what I think of this property is it's not terrible but it does need some improvements to make it livable without causing major dam structure damage down the line my camera died whipping out the iPhone so where I left off was is, uh, I was just saying that it does need some improvements and the roof needs to definitely be replaced and sometimes that can be crushing to a first-time home buyer coming in dropping all your money in on purchasing the property and then someone coming across you and that you have another ten thousand dollar bill to replace the roof that's not ideal for most uh, first-time home buyers so this property does need some work and uh, um, you want to budget that in to move it into the property to make sure that you can afford it so that's just kind of the general scan follow that strategy and it can help keep you out of keep you out of trouble so that's Chris with the action. If you have any home inspection questions, please drop a comment below and keep following us. I'm going to start that podcast up again soon. Sorry, guys. I'm just, just busy. Bye.